I never wanted to leave sports hobbled and crippled. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjudi here for CBS Sports, and you know who this is. He is the former WWE champion, eight-time tag team champion, triple crown winner, and how could I be sour in the presence of the Snickers-fueled Big E ahead of WrestleMania 40? How's it going, my man? Very, very good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for doing this. Um, very happy we could do it. Shout we were just talking about this off the air. Shout out to Luke Thomas, Brian Campbells, my co-hosts in Morning Combat. We'll, we'll get to Brian and his fatty liver at some point in this, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but before we do, I wanted to know, I, I know you're a big Seinfeld fan, so very quickly, I would like you to sort of recast the main quartet of Seinfeld with WWE superstars who remind you of them. Wow. Um, first one to be easy, uh, Sami Zayn is Kramer. Uh, I think that that's an easy one for me. Um, the rest, ooh. He'd also be a great George is the problem. Um, you know, I'm going to go Kevin KO as as, as George. Um, Becky Lynch as Elaine. I think Jerry might be the hardest. Jerry might be, ooh. That's a difficult one. I, I'm going to go Ch Chad Gable for some reason, the first one coming to mind. I don't have a good explanation. I But he's like kind of... It's, it's not a great choice, but Jerry's a hard one to fill. I'll, I'll go with Gable for now. Listen, you've Gable. got 15 minutes. If something comes out of left field out of nowhere, just feel free to drop it with, like, no warning or hesitation. Okay, I got you. Beautiful. All right. I like it. Now, um, I there's so many things I want to talk to you about, but I feel like it would just be nice to get the questions that you always get asked out of the way. So I will just put it out there. Do we have an update on what the future looks like for you um, in terms of an in-ring career? Uh, we don't, unfortunately. I uh, appreciate everyone still asking. It's uh, The C1 is a tricky bone, and I broke it in two places, something called the Jefferson fracture. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to make the best decision for myself and for my health. And, uh, yeah, I wish I had a better answer, um, but unfortunately, I don't have any right now. At this point, would you say the primary sort of determining factor for you returning in ring? Is it you? Is it up to uh, medical clearance? Like, who would you say is number one in control of this decision at this point? Um, you know, the great thing is I think they, they put me in control of that. And obviously, you know, I'm listening to the doctors. They know more than I do as far as uh, my health and prognosis. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where my ability to live my life day to day, to be in the gym and whatnot is, is not compromised at all. But obviously, you know, getting in the ring, taking bumps, getting, you know, thrown on my back and on my neck is that's that's a little bit different. So, uh, you know, I didn't get into this to end up in a wheelchair or worse. So, uh, you know, just now, you know, I started wrestling when I was 23. And at 23, you know, you often, the idea of being 38, which is the age I'm at now, uh, feels so far off. The idea of, you know, what life in your 40s and 50s looks like feels like an eternity from now. But now those are real things and consequences that I, I think about, you know, and, and wanting to, uh, it's one of the things, I, I've been an athlete my whole life, uh, was, you know, playing tackle football at seven, which I don't know if I recommend, but doing that at seven and, you know, amateur wrestling in middle school, uh, high school. So I've, I've been doing physical things my entire life. And uh, I never wanted to, I never wanted to leave sports hobbled and crippled. Yeah. And, you know, now, now at 38, those are, are considerations of mine. And I just want to make sure that I'm making the best decision for myself and, and for my health moving forward. So it's just one of those things I want to be smart about. Is there anyone else, because, you know, you're not the only professional wrestler who's sort of experienced a scare like this. Is there anyone else, like, I don't know, Edge or someone that you've maybe had a chance to sort of reach out to and get some sort of direction or tips from? Yeah, so, uh, you know, when I broke my neck, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Nash reached out, uh, Stone Cold reached out, uh, Edge reached out. So I've had opportunities to, unfortunately, this is something that, that is a little too common in our yeah. industry is, is neck injuries. So... I've talked to a few different guys and, you know, the thing too is, you know, our scenarios are all a little bit different. Um, you know, I never had, you know, some guys have issues with stenosis, some guys uh, need fusions. I didn't have neck surgery. Um, it was just in a hard collar for three months. And uh, so, yeah, our situations are all a little bit different, uh, but I've been so thankful for, you know, so many of the guys that, that I grew up loving and watching as a kid, so many legends um, who wanted to reach out and just share kind of what they went through when they had their neck injuries. So uh, I'm so grateful to all of them and, and for allowing me to ask questions and, and their their offering advice has been helpful too. 
right, last one on this, because um, I know you're a guy who likes to have fun, so am I. So there's so many other things I want to talk about. Um, the sense I'm getting is that this is a decision on a personal level for you to make. What do you think will sort of be the eureka moment when you do finally decide what the future looks like? Um, I don't know if there will be one. It will be, I think for me, I, I wish I had a more concrete answer. It, it's just a matter of, of listening to the doctors, uh, taking in enough information, uh, kind of looking at my more recent set of scans and deciding if if the gamble is worth it. So yeah, that's it's all kind of fluid right now. And uh, yeah, I, I wish I, I hate being so vague no, and no, it's, so murky, it's life, but man. yeah, but that's, that's kind of where things are right now. Well, and these aren't even the questions I love to ask, but you know, it comes with yeah. the job. So I appreciate you fielding them. And uh, you know, as we move on, I'd be remiss if I didn't think of, I talked to former UFC middleweight champion, Chris Weidman last year. And I know as like fans and spectators, we get so much tunnel vision uh, about the performers that we love. But when we're talking about how he broke his leg in that uh, Uriah Hall fight, I, he, you know, the first thing going through his mind wasn't, will I be UFC champion again or will I fight again? It was, will I play with my daughters again? And that always stuck to me. And I think sometimes we kind of forget that uh, the athletes that we adore are people and they have lives outside of us too. So I appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to make the decision that's sort of best for you and your loved ones. Of course. Um, all right, enough, enough about me and my sob stories here. Um, there's a, I was watching some old Big E clips. Sorry to do a total 180 here, but I feel like it's necessary. What was going through your mind when you said, quote, I went to work on that boy's behind. I opened up his cheeks and I said, I'm doing construction here. This is a construction site. I took the yellow tape and I taped it around the boy's behind and I said, I'm doing work here. So uh, for those not in the know, so this was the promo I cut on digital right after I beat Sami Zayn for the IC title on Christmas Day. And uh, so I typically for digital stuff, the nice thing with the digital promos is you don't go in preparing a promo. You have nothing. So what I typically like to do is I'm always looking for props. I'm always looking for something. Usually they'll just grab you right after and say, hey, do you have a couple minutes? So I'm just frantically looking around and I find a hard hat. So, so now it's just like improv. It's I put the hard hat on, and now I'm thinking, how do I tie the promo into the hard hat? And in the few seconds I had before she asked the question, I just came up with this nonsensical idea of going to work on the boys behind. And obviously, as the, you know, putting the construction hat on, we're remodeling his behind. And thus came this absurd promo about condos and building an airport and whatnot. So uh, very silly, but uh, one of my favorite promos. I know that you'll be on the panel for uh, WrestleMania 40 doing some desk work, heavy hitters like CM Punk, et cetera. Um, I, I think you talked about it after the WrestleMania 40 kickoff press conference. So what sort of dialogue have you had about the company, about doing more commentary or broadcasting work in the long term? Because I feel like you're a real natural fit for it. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Um, it's, so we've had some a few conversations and it's kind of, I don't know if there's a long term like plan that's been laid out. It's mostly, you know, kind of opportunity by opportunity. Usually, you know, a few weeks before, um, they, they, I think they reached out for the Vegas panel maybe a week before. And, you know, it's something I hadn't done before, but, you know, I, actually, no, actually, that's not true. So I I got an email that they wanted me or a text that they wanted me to go. It wasn't until I boarded the flight to Vegas that I even knew I was going to be doing the panel. Um, so that's, that's the nature of, of things in WWE is oftentimes it's just, hey, show up and you get things thrown at you. Um, but Knowing, you know, I have a really good rapport. I, Punk is a friend, a uh, great rapport with Pat, with Michael, uh, with Cole. Um, so, yeah, I, I just knew, you know, the great thing is, I think under this era, <clears throat> the kind of the idea was just, hey, go out there and just talk. There's no one, you know, chatting in your ear, telling you what to say. And I really like the idea of us just showing up. And, and you know, with, with that Vegas panel, I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know how things would unfold. But it ended up being really fun. And the energy was great. And, and so it was just something that I really enjoyed. And I got to be immersed as a fan. And, and for me to just be able to talk freely has been amazing. You know, I, I don't in many ways, you know, I don't, I never had the career that Punk has had. Uh, I don't have the fame that uh, a Pat has. Uh, I, I don't have the longevity that a Michael Cole has. But it's been really great that so many fans have been receptive. You know, I, I didn't feel out of place up there. I felt like I belonged. And, uh, and I really just enjoyed kind of giving my two cents. And if that's something that they want to continue to have me for, then I'll continue to do. You know, I think the product has been so much fun 
that mm. it makes it easy for me to be able to excitedly talk about what I'm seeing and what I want to see. So uh, as long as it continues to be fun, I'll keep doing it. That's that's kind of the position I'm at now where, you know, thankfully I've, I've gotten to the, the place in my career where I've been able to make some, some FU money uh, where, you know, it's like, hey, if I don't need to do any of this, I don't, I won't. Um, so uh, that's the nice thing is now everything I feel like that I'm getting to do in my career is stuff that I'm excited about, stuff that's, that's fun for me. And uh, as long as it stays fun, I'll keep doing it. Speaking of things that uh, excite you and are fun, I, we talked off camera about our mutual friend Andreas Hale. I know you guys work together on the Our, our Heroes Rock project. Got Rhapsody involved. Shout out to Ruby Bridges telling this beautiful story. Um, I feel like you've talked about in various capacities and in interviews all over the place. I saw you on The Breakfast Club. But, you know, I saw a tweet you put out recently about um, how women, how, you know, black women like Bianca Belair are, are sort of treated in this professional wrestling landscape. Sometimes it feels like we're making good progress. Sometimes it feels like we're taking a step backwards. What is it about Our Heroes Rock that is so enduring and will sort of continue to s tell a story that people need to hear? Well, I mean, uh, I think we're, we're telling stories that uh, matter now and will continue to matter. Um, so uh, for our first you know, foray, we're telling the story of Ruby Bridges. And, you know, her story was very relevant in 1960 when uh, the six-year-old Black girl integrated an all-white school in New Orleans. And unfortunately, that, that story is still needed now and it's still relevant now. And I think oftentimes we can look to the progress that we've made as a culture and as a country. But, uh, you know, we can also look to oftentimes how much we have regressed or how much we haven't progressed. And, um, you know, right now, you know, I, I think about how many times that I hear from other black talent and they talk about the ways, um, you know, especially black women, the ways that the fans are with them on Twitter and on social media. And it just definitely demonstrates that we're sometimes not as far along as we would have hoped. So uh, that, that's my goal is to use my platform, to use my voice, to continue to sell stories that matter. And, uh, you know, we're just all, for me, it's just about pushing for a more equitable world. Um, whether it's gender, whether it's sex, uh, you know, we all deserve the right to pursue our dream, to have the protections of the law, to be respected by our peers. All those things matter. And uh, uh, it's something that's important to me and, and something that I will always pound the pavement for is uh, is just, yeah, we have a lot of talented Black men and women in this industry, and I want them to continue to get the opportunities that they deserve. And, uh, you know, beyond that, whether it's uh, gender, uh, just well, you know, we people from a myriad of different backgrounds and they all deserve those protections. They all deserve that respect and to be valued. And that's uh, I think that's always worth fighting for. Uh, if fans want to learn more about Ruby Bridges and see the great work you guys are doing with Our Heroes Rock, like what's the first bit of multimedia they should find to kind of whet the appetite and send them down the rabbit hole? I appreciate that. It's Our Heroes Rock on YouTube. If you just Google that, Our Heroes Rock, um, you'll find our short film Bridges and there's going to be more to come. So we have a bunch of featurettes. Uh, talking about the making of the movie and we have more things coming down the pipeline as well but our heroes rock on youtube we're also our heroes rock on twitter and on instagram as well biggie as we wrap up i always like to run through some rapid fire ask some off the cuff questions let's start here shout out to snickers sponsoring their ninth wrestlemania keeping the fans fed which wwe superstar is in most need of a snickers to kind of cure their hanger i know my wife is just a, a menace if she doesn't get her food in oh uh solo sokoa definitely needs a snickers yeah yeah immediately uh immediately. now on an unrelated note don't they don't mean to conflate the two uh we mentioned you're a big morning combat fan as am i a day one donker right here as an athletic specimen like yourself, what diet advice would you have for Brian Campbell and his black fatty liver? <laughs> uh, to, to leave the uh, gas station hot dogs alone forever. You're you're too old for that, Brian. We love you, but uh, leave that be. And you know he's he's doing he's doing more, he's getting more greens in his diet as well. That that's a positive thing. So uh, keep keep that up. You know we want to see you around for quite some time. Yes, we do. Shout out to yes. Brian, greatest guy ever. Um, now. I feel like you've talked about this on an episode of an Uproxx podcast years ago, but I want to make a YouTube short. So I'm going to need you to walk me through what was going through your mind oh, here when God. you just clocked AJ Lee. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, look, this, so this is my very first main roster match ever. This is the night after WrestleMania. This is the same night that Dolph cashes in, wins the title, 
And I'm having, uh, I'm about to go out, I'm going out for a singles match with Daniel Bryan. So in NXT, I'm used to swinging my arms. That's how I get ready. And for some reason, it didn't occur to me that I have people close to me. You know, you got a, you got a, a, a perimeter to, to worry about, you know? You, you got to worry about, you got a radius around you that, that you got to worry about. And I was just freely swinging my arms, you know, getting ready. And I swing my arm. And I know immediately what I've done. I know AJ's there. And I'm thinking it's her face. I'm thinking I'm going to turn around and blood is going to be pouring from her nose. It is it is a horrific moment. Mind you, I'm already like, this is my first main roster singles match. It's a huge night, the night after WrestleMania, Izod Center in New Jersey. And I'm freaking out. I, I am, I'm worried that I'm going to turn around, she's going to be bleeding, and I'm going to be fired. That is my concern. And thankfully, I turn around as frightened as can be, and I look, and she's good. She laughs it off. And, and I was so relieved in that moment. But uh, that was the most terrifying moment of my career. And uh, she made fun of me for quite some time. But I'm just glad she was okay, because that could have been very, very bad. Imagine that moment with Dolph celebrating with the World Championship, and she has a broken nose. Like, it, it really just it, it kind of ruins the whole moment. Thank God she was good. But I learned my lesson very quickly. But I was very, very terrible. I mean, she, she know like, I mean, not that I'm proclaiming myself to be an athlete on uh, AJ Lee's level, but I probably would have been on the floor with a crack rib and she did not so much like she snickered. She did not so much as. Yes. Yeah. 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 Her there. yeah. And, and snickered is that's an appropriate word because I could have used a Snickers in that moment <laughs> yeah, yeah, to calm me down because, boy, I, I was I was unsettled for, for quite some time. But yeah, she she would joke uh, years later that I broke her sternum in that moment, which I did not. She was fine. I love a good plug, too. Very nice job tying it back together. Last one before I let you go, Biggie. I feel like this might be up. I feel like since you, you know, are coursing with the power of positivity, you can get away with this more than some people. But I would like one story about a time uh, another superstar made you break character on TV. Ooh. You know what? I'm usually the one making people break character. Oh, you can tell me a good story the other way as well. That's fine. Um, so this wasn't, this wasn't on TV. But there was a time, um, so we were doing live events with the Usos. Uh, we were still heels. It was the Usos and Big Show. We were doing Europe, whole Europe tour. Uh, six minutes was so much fun. But every night, it was always my goal. You know, the Big Show, you know, very stern, very large human being. Every night, it was my goal to break Big Show. So I think we would come out first, then he would come out. But I, I often do a thing where I would sit on the middle rope, and I would kind of swing back and forth with my legs. You know, I, I got very flexible legs. So I got my legs splayed out as much as possible, <laughs> revealing, you know, as much. So you know what, what's there. You know that area. Revealing I'm, it and swinging My wife's it back a nurse. I'm familiar with how it all works. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, it was always. So I was able to break him every single night. Um, it was either that. I get him on the entrance. Sometimes I get him with just hip thrusting. But you got you to gotta keep the eye connection. You don't break eye contact yeah. when, you're, when you're thrusting in a man's direction. And that'll, and that'll eventually break him. So that was always my goal. But we had so much fun um, during those uh, those European tours. But yeah, I got Big Show every single night for a whole two weeks. All right, good. I'll have to keep that one in the memory log for the next time I catch up with him. All right, Biggie, I want to leave you with the last word, so I'll do my part very quick. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. Subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let us know. When is the, you know, when has Biggie made you laugh the hardest? Love to hear from you. Uh, Biggie, if there's anything you want to tell the people, I want to leave the floor with you ahead of WrestleMania 40. Whatever you want to talk about, man. WrestleMania 40 is going to be huge. Make sure to check it out. I'll be doing the panels for the pre-shows both Saturday and Sunday. It'll be a very busy week. Make sure to check it out. And also, i got to give some more love to our presenting partner, Snickers, for the ninth year in a row. Uh, this year, they'll be uh, co-sponsoring with WWE 2K24. Also an incredible game. Make sure to play that as well. But uh, it's WrestleMania. It's going to be incredible. Make sure to tune in. Uh, enjoy yourself.